debunking myths about traction alopecia. So the first question that I ask a client who reaches out to me for help growing their edges back is how they believe they got to where they are with their level of traction alopecia. And some of the common reasons that I've had over the years, there are three of them, is that I get it from my mom, grandma, auntie, etc. And there's a yes and no component to that, and here's why. It's called genetic behaviors, which are events that you experience as a child that now shape your identity, beliefs, and behaviors. So if you're following the same hair care practices that you saw as a child, like never witnessing hair care on yourself or a caregiver, which is hair care neglect, never seeing your hair grow or any of your caregivers, constantly hearing elders or other people um, around you speak of natural hair negatively, growing up in a salon and never having the opportunity to see or know your hair in its natural state because it was always pressed straight or relaxed. Be aware that you can also pass any negative feelings that you have about the way your hair looks onto your children and the children that you care for. So the truth is, it is genetic in a way because what's being passed down are the habits and behaviors that you witnessed and then therefore developed. They're the exact same ones that are giving you the outcomes that mom, grandma, and auntie have. Traction alopecia in itself is not genetic though. The next myth is that your edges are gonna grow back and I wanna let you know sometimes they don't. You definitely risk permanent balding when you grow accustomed to certain trending hairstyles that cause you to have to use glue or some type of an adhesive on your scalp and around your hairline and then think that you're going to just be able to grow them back because there are levels to traction alopecia. The third reason is that pain is normal. So I had a client named Charmaine and she was a chronic braid wearer before she came to me. And she told me that she used to always tell the braider like, hey, you braiding too tight. You know, she would always address it. And her braider would always say that it had to be tight in order to last. So over the course of a few months, she started to notice that she didn't have any edges, like they were completely thin gone. So she reached out to me for help and I advised her to first stop going to that braider. And then I provided her with healthy alternatives and put her on a program that would help to grow her edges back. And here's a little tip, braids are not the issue. It's always the braider, y'all. It's always the braider that you choose not knowing the correct tension or the correct natural to synthetic hair ratio to use. So awareness is the first step towards change. Missing edges is not genetic. Yes, it can be permanent. And braids don't have to be tight in order to last. Cover your hair up at night if you want it to last. Get you a satin scarf or a do-rag. Okay, make sure to visit my website. The links are in the description below and download my free ebook. Sign up for my free webinar so that you can start the process of building a loving relationship with your natural hair. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment if you gained any clarity or feel more empowered as a result of this video. Share it with others that you know will benefit. Because we literally are a community. And of course, support by hitting that subscribe button. See you in the next video.